James Monroe, the last of the founding fathers. Monroe, was born in Westmoreland County, Virginia, in 1758, graduated from the College of William and Mary, served honorably in the Continental Army, and worked as a lawyer in Fredericksburg. He participated in the Virginia Convention that approved the Constitution as a young politician and supported the Anti-Federalists. In 1790, he was elected to the Senate of the United States as a supporter of Jeffersonian ideals. He's shown great sympathies for the French cause when serving as minister to France from 1794 to 1796. Later, he assisted Robert R. Livingston in negotiating the Louisiana Purchase. He was the Republican nominee for president in 1816 thanks to his desire, vigor, and President Madison's support. He gained re-election with scant Federalist opposition in 1820. Monroe appointed a Northerner, John Quincy Adams, to the position of Secretary of State and a Southerner, John C. Calhoun, to that of Secretary of War. Only Henry Clay's opposition prevented Monroe from appointing a distinguished Westerner. Early on in his term, Monroe went on a diplomatic tour. His arrival in Boston was heralded as the start of an era of good feelings. Unfortunately, despite Monroe's continued popularity and support for nationalist programs, these good emotions did not last. The Missouri Territory's citizens were definitely more shocked than usual when their bid to become a slave state in the Union in 1819 was rejected because of a harsh economic crisis. Angry congressional discussion about a revised measure to progressively abolish slavery in Missouri lasted two years. The Missouri Compromise Law put an end to the conflict by uniting Maine, a free state, with Missouri, a slave state, and permanently banning slavery to the north and west of Missouri. In response to the prospect that the more conservative countries in Europe could try to help Spain in regaining her old colonies in Latin America, Monroe announced the fundamental foreign policy that bears his name. It wasn't until 1822 that Monroe started formally recognizing the fledgling sister republics after learning that Congress would approve funding for diplomatic delegations. He wanted to wait until Spain had relinquished the Floridas, which it did in 1821 before getting into problems with Spain, along with Secretary of State John Quincy Adams. With a strong fleet, Great Britain opposed the reconquest of Latin America and proposed that the United States join it in saying hands off. Monroe was persuaded to accept the offer by former Presidents Jefferson and Madison, but Secretary Adams countered, it would be more frank to avow our ideas clearly to Russia and France, than to come in like a cockboat in the wake of the British men of war. Monroe followed Adams' suggestions. He cautioned that not only should Russia refrain from encroaching southward on the Pacific coast, but also that Latin America should be left alone. The American continents, he declared, are henceforth not to be considered as objects for future colonization by any European power, by the free and independent condition which they have attained and retain. This became known as the Monroe Doctrine around 20 years after Monroe passed away in 1831.